So today has been a long time coming and it is finally the day where we can get my BMW E82 painted up after a long journey of turning it into a BMW 1M. So it is about time my BMW is at least all one colour. It's been looking like this with multicoloured panels for the last four or five weeks now and I'm kind of getting fed up with it. Now you'll be glad to hear that we're not going to be painting this in my garage with rattle cans, we're going to a proper body shop. So that's the first job for this video, is we're going to drive up to Nottingham or Derby area and get this to the body shop. So about an hour's drive from Leicestershire up north into Derby and bumping into a fellow Aston Martin owner on the way. And a quick stop off at Starbucks for an iced coffee and parking my car outside my old work so I can have a little reminisce and think about how far this car's come. Right, so car's dropped off and I've got my taxi home. This is a proper taxi it as well. It is a taxi, yeah, go on then. Right, so it's a couple of days later and I've left the car with Luke. He's the chap that did the rear arches on the One Series and he's going to be painting the car. So. I've left the car with him and he's already started prepping and done a few other bits, so let me show you quick. So firstly and most notably he has cut some holes in my bonnet so we have now got holes just here for the M3 kind of bonnet vents and also we're fitting aero catches because this is a fiberglass bonnet there's two reasons why it's going to be there. One is going to make it fit a little bit better at the sides and at the edges and make it all sit a bit cleaner but two with the single fastening in the middle it's probably not the safest going into fiberglass so having that backup of having those aero catches is really going to clamp the bonnet down and make sure it's as safe as possible. He's also stripped off all the indicators, the wing mirrors, the door handles and all the other bits that are going to get in the way when it comes to getting a nice clean finish with the paint on the car. Now I'll be honest with you I fell in on the easy part of the job because these guys have done most of the prep already and I want to be as involved as possible so I've made sure I'm down here as soon as I've got some free time to give a helping hand and to try and make the process a little bit easier for these guys. So the roof is staying the original colour and you'll understand why in a couple of videos time but that can stay as it is. We've got the rest of the car to paint and I really need to start pulling my weight so let's get on with it. So I kind of joined the boys up at the stage where most of the prep work was done luckily and to be honest with you I'm kind of glad about that because it is a lot of work getting a car ready for paint. And to be honest with you, this is the part that makes or breaks a respray. It's all about masking up well, being thorough, and also prepping the surfaces thoroughly, because otherwise the finish on the job is going to be poor. So taking your time here pays dividends at the end of the job. So as I said in the previous clip, we're going to be leaving the roof the original colour, because I'm going to be doing something else with that, so we'll come back to that at a later date but we just want to make sure we're covering off any areas that we don't want to get paint on and making sure that all of the edges of the panels and everything is completely clean and prepped ready for that first coat of paint. So some of you super anal people will be unpleased to hear that we are not painting the door shuts on this car and there's two reasons behind that. Painting a car is one, a very time consuming process and two, a very expensive process and to be honest with you, doing door shuts just adds a next level to that so we are working on a limited budget, it's something to remember and we want to make sure that it's going to look as good as it can but without going overboard on the spending it where possible. But there we have it, there is one BMW 1 Series completely prepped and ready for paint. So the car is more or less masked off now and I want to talk to you quickly about colour because I've been a little bit of a nightmare here. I had made my mind upon colour and I was dead certain about it for ages, I knew exactly what I wanted, I had it in my mind until the day where I dropped the car off here and I just got really cold feet and... <laughs> 
I didn't know exactly if I'd made the right decision. So the colour that we're going to be painting the BMW 1 Series in is a BMW individual colour called Purple Silk. I absolutely love this colour. I've seen it on M4s and I think it looks mint. But the reason why I kind of got cold feet about it is because when I was searching the colour and having a look at cars in those colours in different lights, they look completely different, which is good and also bad. And it's bad only down to my preference. I just thought that in the sunlight, this colour, I'm going to flash it up on screen now. Um, I didn't know if that just looked a little bit feminine, especially with it being on a smaller car, which again, there's nothing wrong with, but I wanted to make sure the car still had that evil kind of look to it. So, Luke's had an idea because he's already bought the paint, so I'll go into the other room and explain it to you. So here is the colour, and in the tin it looks really nice and dark, but when it's shot on the car, it is a very different story. It's a much lighter colour than what it appears in here. So what we're going to do to kind of negate that a little bit, because I still want to stick with that colour, like I still think that colour is absolutely sick, but I just want to pull that back a tiny bit. What we're going to do is we're going to paint a black base first, then paint the colour over the top, and then clear coat it, just to take away and give you know, give a darker tone to that colour while still keeping with that colour, seeing as we've already got the paint as well. I'm sure some of you are going to hate it. So many people wanted me to do this car Valencia Orange, which is like the BMW 1M colour, but I want it to be different to that. So, you know, it's got to be distinctly mine. So I definitely did not want white, black or orange, which are the BMW 1M colours. But there's only one way to find out if this is going to look good or not. And that, I suppose, is just to get on with it. And fingers crossed, I'm hoping that it's going to look how I'm expecting it to look and look nice and wide and evil and all looking all good things when it's painted up so fingers crossed hopefully you guys are gonna like it hopefully I'm gonna like it but yeah let's get on with it so before we spray paint on the car we give it one final last run over with some panel wipe and then also with a tack cloth too to remove any last bits of dirt or grease or grime or whatever there may be on the panels so this car does not need priming on a hole, we're just going to be spot priming the car just to make sure that any areas where we may have gone through the paint or anything like that are completely prepped, ready, but as I say the rest of the car does not need it. And once that was dry we could then lay down that black base coat. As I said we're going to be painting this car black before we paint it purple in order to bring down some of those tones and make it a little bit less in your face. And at this point, I did kind of realize why some people wanted me to paint it satin black, because I'm not gonna lie, it did kind of look sick. Okay, so the black base coat is now down, and now it is time to lay the purple. Fingers crossed this color's gonna look sick, but I'm still a bit nervous, so let's see, let's see. So once the car had been rubbed over once more to make sure that surface was absolutely pristine, we could then start hitting it with our coat of purple silk paint. And as it's going on, I'm sure we can all agree it's going to look good. Painting, by the way, is no easy task. It takes a lot of skill to make sure that you get complete coverage and an even coat on the car every single time. So hats off to Luke who absolutely nailed this one. I can't even lie. So once again, we hit the car with a tack cloth. Now that base coat is dry, just to prepare it ready for lacquer. In my opinion, lacquering the car is the most important part of this job because it's got to be done correctly and it's a real fine art doing it. 
And the reason why this is challenging is because you've got to make sure you get a completely smooth coat over the car, but at the same time, not applying too much clear coat that you're going to start getting runs. And I know in theory that sounds easy, but I promise you it isn't. Making sure that you get to the edge of every single panel and making sure you get that nice, clean, crisp finish is definitely no easy task. So the BMW is now in the oven behind me and completely painted and lacking apart from you know the bumpers and the side skirts and the other bits that bolt onto the car and we've done alright for time. It is, I don't know if you can see, it's 20 past 11 and what's that took about? Four or five hours, something like that? Well, I, yeah. That's not bad going, not bad going. So I'm going to leave the car with Luke now. He's going to do the finishing touches and I'm going to pop back up and help with the reassembly and the flattening and polishing. So let's do a quick switcheroo and we'll be back then, which is going to be in a second. Right, so it's another day and we're back again and it's now time to get the One Series just about finished. And the final stage of the painting process is probably the longest one. It's flattening and polishing and it can be tedious, but luckily this is an area where I, I have a certain level of expertise considering I own a detailing business, so I've come down to help Luke finish it off and get this car looking top notch. So let's get on with it. So the reason why we wet sand cars is because when you paint it, unfortunately, it's pretty much inevitable that you're going to get dirt nibs and bits and bobs like that in the paint. But also as well, it helps smooth out the orange peel on the finish and make it almost like glass. So as Luke attacks the sanding, I'm going to attack the polishing and this isn't definitely the ideal way to do it. You know, working in a body shop environment is definitely different to working in a detailing environment. But, you know, I take my expertise and work with Luke and try and get this look in as best as we can as a team. And how much better is that looking? As you can see, the bonnet is looking free from dirt nibs, swirls, scratches and sanding marks. So I can safely say we've done a good job. If you guys like what I did on this bonnet and you want the same for your car, you can help us out by supporting the channel as well and using my own business, Slits Car Care, to detail your car. And as a thank you for watching our videos and also doing that, I'm going to offer you 10% off if you use code, let's go for 1M, uh, on a new inquiry and new quote. I'll give you 10% off that, no questions asked. So it's collection day for the BMW, but we've got a few last little finishing jobs to do before I take it away and I can show you guys properly. So let's get those done and then we can have a proper look at the car. First thing is the spoiler. The 1M kit actually came with a fiberglass spoiler, which looks all right and looks kind of painted black for us, but purple and black for me ain't really gonna go. So it's gotta be the finest carbon fiber. So instead of that, we're gonna be fitting up this lovely lightweight carbon fiber 1M spoiler. So that's gonna look sick with the purple on the car. So that's the first job. So me and Luke worked together on this task just to make sure that each edge was lined up perfectly and evenly. And then once we've found a nice medium between the two, a good shove in place, secure that spoiler. So next up, the car needed a new side light bulb for the halos in the headlight and it just would be a shame, wouldn't it, to have a car freshly painted and a headlight bulb not working. Then, as we did on the front, it's time for a brand new, a genuine BMW badge just to make sure that every single little trim on the car is looking as best as it possibly can. Next up, a part I always struggle with is getting the number plates on. And I know that sounds daft because it's just some sticky pads, but getting this level honestly looks so rubbish when you get it wrong. But once you take your time and get it right, you know, it's worth doing. Luke has very kindly painted these trims for us in gloss black. They actually came wrapped but looked rubbish. So we got that off, painted them in black, and then clipped in the new ones on the top and the ones on the bottom actually bond on. So 
So I have now got the One Series home, so without further ado, I would like to introduce to you guys my freshly painted BMW Purple Silk E82 1M replica. So the BMW is now looking sick. I'm not going to call it a 1M. It's always going to be the 135i, but how much better is that looking in this color? Luke has absolutely smashed it out of the park with his paint job. Everything is looking sweet. Obviously, we've left the roof and the mirror caps because we're going to be doing something with them, so it's just pointless painting them. But on the whole, it could not be looking much better, I don't think. But hopefully you guys approve of my colour choice. I know it's a little bit out there and it's not OEM, but let's face it, that's not really what I'm about. But Luke has done lots of messing around, bar just the paintwork. He has painted the indicators, the 1M1s, which came in chrome, which look a bit naff. He's painted the window surrounds, he's fitted the bonnet vents, fitted some aero catches, done some mesh grills on the front too to tidy that up. So hats off to him, he's put some hard work in. So obviously around the back, there's still some work to do. We've got to fit the new diffuser, the new exhaust. I'd love to do something with these rear lights as well if there's something out there. But this carbon spoiler is looking loads better than the one that came with the kit. And I'd like to do some other parts in the car that match in with that. So hopefully you guys could see my vision from the start and seeing that it was going to turn out like this. I could not be much happier with it but there's still plenty more work to do. But all of that is gonna have to wait for another video, unfortunately. If you are new here, make sure you smash the subscribe button, smash a like on the video, and I'll catch you next time.